If you're building automations for clients, you're probably making this mistake. You're building something that you're really proud of and you put a lot of effort in, but the client doesn't really understand it or appreciate it fully. And I learned that the hard way when clients weren't getting excited at all about the automation running in the background. What I understood is that they wanted to see something that they could actually interact with and it changed everything. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down step by step, my automation delivery process that ensures my clients are actually completely blown away, making them a lot more likely to return and work with me in the future. So let's dive in. So the client signed, what next? So there's, they've either signed and they've paid a deposit, you have a written agreement in place, or they've just paid the full price up front. Personally, for my clients, I like them to give a deposit and they feel a bit more in control of the finances along with a written agreement as well which shows that you're going to pay the rest on project completion. It's completely up to you. I tend to do 40-60 so a 40% deposit, 60% on project completion. But for a lot bigger projects, for enterprise, you know, enterprise grade projects, um, I charge for a discovery. So that could be two to three or four days of me going into their business, understanding their process from top to bottom so I can really then create an accurate estimate of how long the project's going to take. Give them that estimate and then again they'd either do a deposit or pay that on project completion and that'll be charged at a daily rate. So I don't know if I explained that too well so I'll just explain it again. If it's a larger project so say it's it could potentially take me 20 days to build I'd probably do a two to three day discovery so i'd go in and understand what it what their process everything and really know back to forth what it is i'm going to be building what apps are going to be integrated with it and how it's going to help them okay once i have that information after these two or three days i can then go away and create a really accurate estimate of how long the actual project is going to take me to build so say that i then estimate it's going to take me 20 days that would be 23 days overall including the discovery that took me 3 days and I charge a daily rate of that, right? So they sign off the discovery, pay for either the full discovery or 4060. Then once I've given them the full project estimate, they'll pay the re remaining 60% of the discovery, and then they'll probably pay like a 20% deposit depending on how big the actual project's gonna take. And then we'll do like a milestone billing. So I'll say, right, phase one, I'm gonna finish this. Once I've finished that, you pay me X amount, they're at another 20%. Once I finish milestone two, another 20%. I hope that makes sense if I've explained it quite well. I don't think I have. <laughs> but I hope you're sort of getting the gist, right? And then once the project's completed, they'll pay the remainder, whatever that is. So I'll make sure they're really excited to get going and make them, make them understand that I'm excited to even build it, even if it's already a template I've already built. So really in this, in this video, sorry, I'm not going to be going over what I just discussed doing the discovery and then the project this is going to be all about um just doing a project that might take me a few days to build or even a couple hours or even if it's just a template okay um once the client signed we'll organize a kickoff call the kickoff call i normally put in for 50 to 15 to 20 minutes it doesn't need to take long at all i'll introduce the project and everything i'll be doing from start to finish and this is my chance to get everything from them so i sign up to make.com with them and you'll both own the password which you'll store in a password manager i'll ask the client prior to the kickoff call to have all the api keys ready for whatever apps it is we're going to be um including so for example if we're doing the lead gen system i'll make sure they have perplexity api ready open ai instantly um, I'll make sure I, we're logged into their Google account on like Google Sheets or anything like that. Um, any mail finder, I'll make sure they have all that prior. So when we've signed up to mate.com, they can then just pass all that over to me and I can start building um, using their API key and not having to use any of mine. Well, I've just set it there, log into Google Sheets and create any ne necessary sheets that are needed. Um, because obviously, if they need some sort of sheet being created during the automation which i've done recently if you look at how i helped a client recently um i need to make sure that those sheets are already created so i can just access them through the google sheets module on make.com i'll reiterate the results so they make so they stay results driven they could end up getting a bit overloaded and a bit overwhelmed with information so i'll always keep introducing 
um, throughout the conversation the results that they can expect from this automation to keep them keep that excitement there and that buzz there, right? I also keep asking engaging agreement questions to make them feel present and part of the conversation. So constantly asking for agreement, like, does that make sense? Are we on the same page? Are you with me on this? Do you see how that's working? Do you see how that could help you going forward? And they're going to feel like they're more part of the conversation. Because if you get too technical, it might not be technical to you, but to them, they might have not have a clue what you're talking about. So make sure you're dumbing it down and also asking that agreement question so it makes it feel like it's a real two-way conversation instead of you just explaining at to them. So then after that project kickoff, the, the project will commence or the discovery. So you're now at the start of either the two, three-day discovery or just the project. The discovery is only for larger projects like I um, explained before. If a project is 10 plus days, then the discovery is needed. Two days might be the discovery. You still pay, they'll still pay for that. Basically, what you're doing is you're understanding their process back to front, what they need to get out of it, where the challenges lie, the types of uses they get for the automation, and exactly what result it is that they can expect from it. After this discovery, you'll confidently then know what automation will work best and you'll create an automation they've never even had dreamed of, dreamt of. You can also confidently quote the remainder of the work. Typically, the discovery is signed off before the project. So that's everything I explained before. I forgot that I actually put it in this slide. Um, There's three ways that I like to bill, or I at least mention it to the client and they decide how it is. Time and material. So you may have quoted 10 days. That doesn't mean day and night you're going to be working on this. For me, it means 7.5 hours is one day. So 10 days is 75 hours. That's how long it's going to take me. And I'll keep timesheets and they'll only get billed for how long it actually takes me. So they understand that if it ends up taking me longer, they are going to have to get, they they will get invoiced for the extra work that it's going to take. Fixed price, that is within reason. If I've quoted 75 hours, or sorry, 10 days and it takes me 15, it's probably something to do with my skill set, which I wouldn't think so. Um, you know, it depends on what's happened. If it's something to do with them, they, they spent a couple of days getting the API keys to you or anything like that, that is their fault or even shared fault. I normally pass that cost over to the customer because it's only fair, but if it's purely and solely my fault, then it's my fault and I will not be passing any costs over, costs over to the customer. You can do a fixed price, so that's just a predetermined total price. When it's a plug and play template automation, that's when you'll use that. When you've sold an automation to a company before and you've then you've reached out to that industry and a few more other people have been interested, but you've already done the work for it, you can just plug and play. You'll just do a fixed price. How much is that automation worth? Two, three, four, five, six grand. And then a hybrid, you can do a bit bit of both. So a fixed price, but if you go over a certain amount of hours, the customer's liable to pay, which is what I mentioned before. You have to maintain, you might be on your own and this might be the first time you've ever done something like this, but you need to maintain professionalism. And the best way to do that, I think, is to just keep giving them some updates on Slack, create a Slack channel um, or create an automation that pushes notifications to their phone once the milestone, milestone has been completed. Um. And then once you've completed the project, organize a meeting to hand over the projects. And again, it should just be a 15, 20 minute meeting. But before you create that meeting, this is absolutely crucial. You have to do end to end testing. It has to be done. A quarter of the whole project time must be done testing. You can't hand over a project and have it break straight away. It will completely ruin your credibility. You have to take everything into account, what they could click what they could do, what could potentially go wrong and keep testing and testing and testing until it breaks and then you know how something, you know how to fix it um, and for that break not to happen again. If you just, um, if you just run it a few times and you think, yeah, that works, I guarantee there's going to be something that goes wrong. So test every little thing, the inputs, outputs, the sheets, databases, everything. And once you're confident it's going to work without breaking, then you can hand it off to the client and you'll walk them through how to trigger the automation and where the results will then be shown. This is so important. 
I've talked about it a couple of times now and I'm going to do a separate video of it. Guys, this is, this is going to, this changes the game for the client. I talk about professionalism. This gives them something. This is what I mentioned at the start of the call, something they can see and they can feel and they can touch something that's sexy, a front end. You've created the back back end. That's what you're a expert in. But you can now create an app on bolt.new that takes you five minutes. All you have to do is once and then copy and paste the prompt. They don't give a hoot's ass or a hoot's ass <laughs> about the back end. They want something they can see, touch and feel. They want sexy buttons, something they can press and then magic happens elsewhere. They honestly don't give a flying donkey about what you're about to show them in terms of what you built on make.com. They, they will not care. It doesn't make any sense to them. So you'll include a webhook in the app, okay? So when they press, a, they'll input the stuff they need. So for example, you're doing a web, uh, a lead scraping automation. They'll input the search URL, the campaign ID that they want it to end up in, in instantly, and the, and, and I don't know, the spreadsheet ID. Once they press start automation, that triggers the webhook and that triggers the whole automation. So you could have, like I've said, inputs for search URLs, campaign IDs, upload buttons, prompts. They could input a prompt, which dynamically gets added into, um, into GPT, which is pretty cool. And this will trigger your automation without, ha without them having to see the beautiful, let's be honest, the magic that you have actually created. I'm sorry to say it. They just don't care about that. You can have an OAuth login, so only certain people can access it into their organization. You can ask for access to their name servers and domain and have it pointing to their website. It could be www.website forward slash automation, lead gen automation, something like that. And if you are giving away free trials, which I tend to do in my offer as a last resort, if you look at my one of my previous videos, my cold email and blueprint one, um, an extra layer protection for you as well. You can pull the plug at any time because even though they still have access to make.com, you can just, they're probably not technically minded enough to be able to swap out the webhook for an actual other start of the automation. They won't really know how to do it. So you can just pull the plug on the, you know, if they say, right, we're running away with it. Well, no, you're not. I actually own the app. I can pull the plug on that app and... Um, but obviously you guys are going to want to have some sort of written agreement before you give them a free trial that this is your liable property. And if they were to run off, off of it, that would be classed as theft and they will get sued. Um, so this isn't your only protection layer is that you own the app. Obviously you want some kind of written agreement before ever handing off a free trial to anyone. So then the handover. I hope you guys know about blueprints and templates. If not, if you go into make.com, you can literally have something created, export it and import it into another make.com scenario. It's pretty impressive. Um, you want to do a loom video explaining the system back to front and actually test it, you know, run the automation on the loom video because then you, you're showing that it works. So if whatever they do, it means they've probably broken it, which they shouldn't really do. You should also explain in the Loom video, um, hey, uh, this is all you have to do. Don't worry about make.com. I know we've had you sign up on there, but you don't need to worry about that. The only thing you worry about is this app and the app will always be working. Just input and, and then watch the outputs. That's all you need to say to them. Don't tell them to go on make.com or in fact, advise against going on make.com because you're pulling data in a way that needs to be pulled in a, in, in a very structured way. One little change to that can, can blow the whole automation and they need to understand that. You also want to basically just transcribe that Loom video and put it into a text documentation. Then send them an email. Hey, thanks for working with me. And I've called it an upsell email. You know, you can mention other things that you might have seen during the discovery phase that you could potentially automate for them. Or just ask for referrals, I've actually put it on the bottom. So ask questions to make them uncover what the best way you've helped them. So subtly ask if they know anyone else suffering from the same problem and then ask for an introduction. So how, how did we help you? What, what, what do you feel like the, 
the best thing we've done for you is. And they'll, they'll think about it and they'll go, oh, well, now we're able to do this before we were doing that. Oh, okay. Do you know anyone else that might be suffering with that sort of process, long-winded process? Uh, actually, John. Um, he owns... I don't know what he owns, but he owns another business. And yeah, he, he told me he was going through the same thing. Do you mind putting us in touch? Could you just send an email introducing us and, and I'll just take it from there and they'll be more inclined to do it. You can just say, well, you know, would it help John if, if, if I had a chat with him? No, it wouldn't help John. I'm not going to say that, are they? Um, you want to push for a monthly support package, okay? Your time is money. Make sure they know they can't just call you up when it goes wrong. You have other clients who pay, even if you don't, but you, your time is worth a lot of money, right? You have other clients who pay good money for your support. So their priority will always come first. And that's what you'll say to them. If they want, they ring you up and say, oh, this is broken. Well, I, I said, you know, this is tech. We are human. These things do happen, but I have other customers who pay me for my time monthly that I have to work on before you and they won't like that. So they'll want the support package. It's a very easy sell and you get 10 clients on a four, 500 quid one. That's five grand a month passive income. And if you've built it well enough, it's not going to need, um, it's not going to need your, your support. Um, and if they don't want support, like I just said, do not support them, but remind them this is tech. You are, I've already said this, <laughs> you are here and Things may go wrong, that, that's out of your control. But this is how you pitch it before. You say, look, when, I'm not just here to, to plug this in and see you later. You know, I'm not, I'm not a stud. I'm not a slut. I'm here to stay. Um, I want to be in a relationship with you. I want a long-term partnership is basically what I'm trying to say. And I think if you're on a support package, if I had that long-term partnership in mind, I'm more inclined to help straight away get it fixed as soon as possible for you and get you back up and running because I know how important this partnership isn't just for me, but for you as well. Something like that. And my final thoughts, a delivery process can be very unprofessional, especially with, with, with uh, people like us who haven't potential. I, I've worked in, in a, with, with project teams and stuff like that, so I understand the process. But most rush through it and the project sucks or they're missing out on bigger opportunities to work with them again or even just ask for referrals. So if you follow the steps that I've taught you, it will position yourself as a very high-end and professional service provider, a proper trustworthy business partner, not just someone who cold emailed them, put in a project, it broke now and again and you fixed it now and again and you see them later, you know, this is all about relationships and that's what business is about, is building relationships and building a network. Turn one-time projects into long-term clients. Very important. Um, you don't, none of you guys want to be carrying on cold emailing, right? It's annoying. You don't know where your next paycheck's coming from. So focus on relationships, focus on rapport, focus on building long-term relationships and partnerships with your clients so they keep coming to you you're the automation guy you're the ai guy and it's also how you'll stand out for the rest especially the app um, that you're going to create for them you'll you'll stand out from everyone else and you can also add um the added value which adds on dollar signs to your to your automation right so that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching uh, I hope this gives you a bit of clarity and a lot of value. Um, whether you haven't even got your first client yet, it will make you stand out to that client. Or whether you've had a few clients, but the delivery process hasn't been well structured and the process hasn't been fluid. Hopefully this can help you going into your next um, project delivery, but it doesn't have to be complicated. It does have to be professional and it'll make you stand out. But if you enjoyed this video, drop it a like it really helps a lot if you uh, are enjoying the content drop me a subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in the next one take care